The Perennial Pasture Systems, or PPS group, was formed in mid-2007 after a meeting was convened at Halls Gap reacting to producers' concerns about the lack of research and extension into productive pastures due to diminishing resources in the region. The group quickly identified the need for long-term research trials and demonstrations to show the benefits of long-term perennial pastures and to assist producers in their management. Simon Brady from Jaluka was the first president of PPS and he discusses the motivation of the group and how it quickly set about planning three paddock scale pasture variety sites. After the original meeting the steering committee was uh, selected in which I was the president. Um, we had ten members who were uh, fairly dedicated to what we were doing and we got about setting up the group fairly quickly and we come to the conclusion we needed some long-term trials and that's where the uh, three paddock paired system come in and we went from there. Um, we wanted something long-term that we had more information on and we could give our group, if it was successful, um, some long-term basis to plant pasture. Many of the pastures in the upper Wimmera region are in a degraded state with annual weeds such as silver grass lowering potential production. PPS were keen to demonstrate that these pastures could be renovated and replaced with productive varieties. PPS were able to get funding for an Evergraze project site in addition to the three already funded as part of the MLA Producer Demonstration Scheme. And in autumn 2009, the sites were established. Ken Hall from Joel Joel talks about the success of the Uplands Coxfoot Phalaris pasture established on his property. We've got uh, one of the early pasture trials put in about five years the uh, advantage of the farm is just unbelievable I can't wait to get over the whole farm to be able to uh, upgrade our carrying capacity and uh, looking into the future that's 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 what I really want to do so uh, it's all pluses the PPS. PPS established comparison pastures of winter active fescue and phalaris at Melbanks Elmhurst and after five years they show little difference in total carrying capacity. But as site host Ben Green tells us, there is specific management required for each pasture. I guess some of the observations that we've made from them is, is both pastures are persisting very well five years down the track. Um, the the uh, things that we wanted to learn out of the fescue was how fescue performed in our, our area, how, how fescue established. Um, there, was, there was some talk of it being hard to establish. Uh, we found the contrary. Uh, it's, it's no harder or difficult uh, than establishing phalaris. Uh, the fescue part of the trial seem, seems to carry a similar amount of stock um, to, to the phalaris. Now a little bit of background, the phalaris is a tried and proven um, variety in this district. It, we've got paddocks that have been in for 50 or 60 years, um, so that's why that was stacked up against the fescue. Um, I guess the, the things to note about the fescue was its um, early early heading, so come the beginning of October it punches out ahead and at that stage your feed quality does decline. Um, that, that, that seed head was reasonably unpalatable. Um, some of the advantages that we we noted with it is it, it's very early to uh, to kick in the autumn. Um, it sh completely shuts down to any summer rainfall, so it makes it quite drought hardy and tolerant. And it it also provides or tends to provide excellent winter feed. Um, has it got a place in our system? Yes, I think it has, but it, it's it's not an answer to sow over the complete farm. Um, I think some of the places that you would tend to put it would be on some early finishing country, but bearing in mind that you still need fertility to drive the plant and get production out of it. In the Phalaris side of that trial, we, we have whole fast GT and it's mixed with Australian at 50-50 mix. reason for that was we, we didn't at the time know know how whole fast GT was going to perform over the long term and it was a safeguard to put Australian with it which we did know. Uh, since then I had very good confidence in whole fast GT and, and uh, consequently have sown, sown paddocks to, to that variety on its own mixed with sub clover. It tends to be highly winter active and uh, 
out, out produces Australian in its winter producing capacity um, and provides grass when you, when you need it in the depths of winter. So that, that has, has looked very successful at this stage. The third pasture variety site was at Jaluka, where a paddock of grazing brome and a paddock of phalaris were sown next to each other as a comparison on a gravel rise. PPS concluded that the grazing brome was not a suitable variety for this region after two years of detailed measurements and it was decided to conclude the trial. The phalaris pasture is still highly productive after six years. In 2009, PPS also commenced a project at Mooney's Gap near Ararat which was part of the nationwide Evergraze program. PPS implemented a best practice management Phalaris pasture and paddock scale Lucerne trial to test its suitability in the foothill country rather than the typical areas of creek and river flats. Both trials proved highly successful with the Phalaris pasture showing an annual average 7% increase in production over the control pasture consisting of annual grasses. The Lucerne pasture is still persisting after six years and the host farmer, Rod Veering, has expanded the amount of both Phalaris and Lucerne based pastures on his farm. Rod Veering from Mooney's Gap discusses the results from the PPS Evergraze sites and how they've changed his farming enterprise. After the uh, success of the two uh, trial paddocks, I've gone on and sown two more uh, Lucerne paddocks and one more Phalaris paddock and uh, hopefully there'll be another Phalaris paddock being sown next week um, and I'm in preparation for the next one and I hope to keep going right over the farm if I live long enough. Yeah, the, the sites are in a great spot right on the Pyrenees Highway. Um, everybody sees them when they come around the corner. A lot of people comment on uh, how great the pastures look and I get a real thrill out of it actually. In 2010, PPS established a second Evergraze site at Tottington, south of St Arnold, to test pasture establishment methods and grass varieties. The trial results were compromised by drought conditions, but some useful findings were made from the trial. PPS has completed full reports on the pasture comparison and Evergraze projects, which are available on the PPS website. PPS has continued their research program into soil management with a subsoil amelioration project and work on variable lime application after detailed soil pH mapping. PPS has also commenced a series of pasture variety trials to assess their suitability in a range of soil types. In a continuation of pasture variety research, PPS implemented a Coxfoot variety comparison near Stall on the property of PPS member Matt Kindred. Matt gives us his views on the different pastures. We established three different Coxfoot cultivars in adjoining paddocks. Um, Series of years. Uh, the first was established post um, having some having a bushfire go through some, some of our country, um, and then the other two were sub, in subsequent years. The Coxfoots we established were um, Porto, uh, Yark, and Uplands, um, with the Porto and the Yark being the more traditional summer active types, and the Yark Uplands being the newer uh, Spanish type Coxfoot. But they all established quite well, and the the Porto and the Yark um, probably have seen a decline in numbers with the Yark more or less disappearing over the last few uh, drier summer periods and it doesn't seem to have a very good fit in our environment. Um, the Porto's hung on but it has declined in numbers or, and um, the ups, Uplands was a bit slow establishing but once it got up and going it, it really got a hold and has outproduced the others um, quite well and its persistence is three or four times what the other varieties are in our environment. So it seems to have a very good fit in the upper catchment and the tougher areas of the window. In 2014, PPS continued its pasture research with the implementation of two major Phalaris based pasture projects. A Phalaris persistence evaluation is being conducted using 40 PPS members paddocks to find the common factors in successful long term pastures. This project is part of the wider MLA funded research into productive pastures. PPS also established the Greenfields project at Glen Lofty, which is a physical and economic evaluation of pasture establishment in the Upper Wimmera. Greenfields host farmer Tony Roberts tells us about the project and what PPS hopes to find over the life of the trial. Um, 
So the focus of the Greenfields project was to take a run-down pasture and build it up to a really highly productive pasture. As you can see behind us, we've got the establishment phase done here now and, and now we're, what we're looking at is a payback period to something that's um, that's really quite acceptable to, to farmers within the area um, to give people the confidence and to take a, a what was a, a really poor paddock and bring it up to what's actually a really A-level a level pasture. So we took the concept of the project to perennial pasture systems and we were fortunate enough to receive a, a, land, a community land care grant um, which enabled us to divide the site into four paddocks to have a, a rotation. So using best practice, um, we've managed to set the, set the project up in such a way that we can measure the, the, the stock inputs and get some figures on, on the economic payback. The PPS research projects, PPS field days, annual conference and study tour, as well as other extension projects, reinforce the benefits of perennial pastures in grazing enterprises. The improved productivity gains combine with enhanced environmental outcomes, including improved ground cover reducing erosion risks, improved water use, reducing the possibility of salinity, and reduced nitrate leaching through the increased uptake of nitrogen by perennial grasses. PPS plans to continue in its aim, which is to push the boundaries of perennial pasture research in our region and provide information on productive pasture management to members. Uh, since sowing the new pastures, it's, it, it's the best thing I, I, I've done in farming. 